R&D Lee here bringing you another edition of Tech Talk. Today we're going to be talking about how to replace a battery on an Atom Electric B10 skateboard. So what I got right here is a B10 in my hands. The battery sits within this battery box compartment. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, take that guy off. First thing we want to do actually is uh, before we take off, we're going to remove the battery pack, okay? But before we do that, I'm going to loosen up the truck bolts a little bit because there's a little piece, a little plastic piece that kind of covers up the motor wires, and I want to be able to slide that out when the time comes, okay? So, all the tools you need, you're going to need a T-tool today, and a screwdriver. Okay, so loosen these guys up, just not a ton. Um, the reason I say don't take the truck all the way off because that's kind of another step in the process. So I'm just kind of loosening two or three turns on these trucks. Just enough so it's nice and loose, but the thing's actually not coming off. Next step, there's actually six bolts that connect the battery pack to the deck. We're going to go ahead and take those off now. So I have my, uh, my power tools lined up with a 3 mil hex key. That's the fitting for these screws here. I like to do the end ones first. Now notice, as I'm about to do the last one, I have my hand supporting the, uh, the battery box underneath. Okay, so the last one's off, but I'm still kind of supporting that battery box down there. At which point I'm going to flip the board over, because, like I said here, you have a, um, a plastic piece that kind of hides the motor wires within the deck. So as I, as I do this and I bring off, I want to actually pull that guy out from underneath the truck. Okay, it's kind of slid underneath the truck and a little bit under the battery box. So doing that, the reason I say loosen up the truck first is if you just kind of yank it off, you can crack that. N not a big deal, but um, that's you know, something that you want to avoid if possible. Okay, so go ahead and flip your battery box over. You've seen an epoxy plate, which kind of adds some waterproofing to the whole system. And on this plate, there's a bunch of little black screws that kind of attach the plate to the, uh, to the battery box. So now I'm going to go through and use a small, like you guys will want to use a little, uh, you know, maybe like a small Phillips screwdriver, something like that. Um, because I'm into my power tools, I am going to use the same thing. I got a nice little small bit. Like that. Okay, so go ahead and loosen these guys up. Not just loosen, actually take them out. Now it comes to kind of, the, here comes the, probably the most difficult part of this process. I'm just pulling all these guys out now. I have a nice place to keep all my little parts so that you don't actually just kind of set them on the table and have them fly off. Um, you can use Tupperware, things like that. My, my favorite actually is um, Frisbees. <laughs> And the reason is because is they're nice and shallow, so when you're digging parts out of it, you don't have to kind of reach your hand into something deep. And the other thing is the edges are curved, so you can just kind of like pull them out from the side like that. So anyway, that's a little tip there. Got my Frisbee. That's 120 gram right there. I got 175 for the big stuff. Okay, so now that you have all your screws off of there, this is probably the most difficult, maybe not the most difficult, but one kind of challenging thing is we have a waterproofing glue that we put uh, as a seal between the epoxy plate and the battery box. You're going to want to, uh, you have to break that seal to kind of get this off. Um, so I run carefully with the blade around, basically around the edge of the epoxy plate and just cut that glue out. And be really careful in this area of the motor wires, okay? So obviously you're not going to want to cut a motor wire. So I'm going to cut I, I don't recommend using a blade because the blade can kind of break something a little more substantial, whatever works for you. And the key is there's still going to be some glue. You've broken the seal around it, but there's still some glue attaching the epoxy plate to the battery box. <clears throat> so you're just going to have to go around and easily just kind of keep, keep prying up as you go a little bit. And if you hear the epoxy plate cracking in a certain area, back off that area and just kind of move on to the next plate. It's a gradual process, but once you start to get the plate to lift, then you can get your screwdriver under there. Don't obviously stick it all the way into the battery box because there's electrical components in there, but you know, a little, you know, a few millimeters is fine. You just want to be able to break that seal. So I got mine underneath there. And now mine's pretty easy. I got it to where it's, it's coming up now. Once you get to that point, you're just peeling this, this guy off, okay? 
And now you have all your internal components exposed. Okay, so once the internal components are exposed, you next step is to disconnect the battery, because now, at this point, when the battery is still connected to your PCB, you're at risk of potentially shorting something out, right? So the first thing is to this, this big yellow connector, it's an XT60, that's the uh, connection between your battery and your PCB. So before you do anything, you're going to want to disconnect that. Pull it out of this channel a little bit, so it's up on top, you'll have a little more access to it. Okay, and then I'm just gonna basically pull with my hands, get it done, and the two are just disconnected. Okay, now the system's a bit safer, you're not gonna short anything out. All right, so the, the next thing to do, there's one more connection, okay, connecting the battery to the PCB. All right, this is your main voltage, so all the stuff that's kind of coming through to give you the power. But there's another piece, which is actually, um, has some little wires that are hooked up to the BMS, and it's a balancing type of thing, and it's also where the charge voltage comes in. So when you plug into the wall to recharge your battery, that's, um, these are the wires that, that that charge is coming through. It's just a little white connector that connects down into that, that charging PCB. Now these, these aren't like clicked in or anything like that, it's just more of a wiggle is what's gonna get them out. Okay, so that guy is good and I have him undone, all right? Next step, there's two more, um, there's two more pieces, two more screws right here, okay? So the battery itself is not screwed in, all right? But the BMS actually is, all right? When you're inside here, I, you know, tend not to use uh, power drills or anything like that. I like to use it, do it kind of manually, um, just for a little added safety. Now it's basically these two screws right here on the corners of, this is your BMS, all right? So your battery, your BMS, and your PCB. All right, so these guys, um, just go ahead and unscrew that. And the next one, doing this far, far corner down there. Yeah, looking good. Okay. Make sure that guy is loose. Yeah, he is. Now once, once he is loose, you can go ahead and just kind of pull out your battery. Now your battery there consists of basically your battery. These are the actual kind of cells, the lithium cells, and this is your BMS. So this is the part that kind of controls charging and makes sure that nothing dangerous happens to your battery. Okay. So then you're going to put that guy aside and get whatever your new battery is, pop that guy back in, and basically just reverse the whole, the whole process. One thing to note is that there's a few different versions of this, obviously. Um, as time goes on, we change things now and again, so some of the PCBs are a little bit different, some of the connectors are different. I'll show you another close-up of, um, of another version, which has a slightly different connector. So basically, um, everything looks basically the same. You might see a different color PCB, that's, that's one way to, to note. But, um, and your actual main connector is the same. But the thing that's different is the little connector that goes to your charging PCB, okay? So that little connector that goes there is a, is a little yellow one in this case. But basically all it is is I'm just, I, I use my nails just to kind of push this guy out. Yeah. And once he's out, you can just wiggle it out with your, with your fingers there, okay? So at that point, we have this totally disconnected, both these batteries out, and we're good to go. Okay, so once you replace your battery, like I said, you're just doing the, everything that we just did, but doing it in reverse. So you're coming back in, getting your battery in place. Okay. Make sure the, uh, the screws line up with the holes. All right. Once they, that's for the BMS. Once they do, you're gonna go ahead and tighten those guys up. Then next you're going to do your, uh, your charging wires. Okay. And then last you're going to do your actual, uh, your main power wire, the XT60. Okay. You might see a little bit of a spark or hear like a little click, that's pretty normal. Um, Tuck that guy back down in the slot right there. So when you connect it, it's gonna be up. 
when you put everything back together, you want to make sure it's nice and uh, nice and smooth there. Okay. So that's pretty much yeah as you have it. When you put the epoxy plate back on, you just want to make sure all the all the wires. There's nothing kind of sticking up that's going to get squashed when you put it back in. But apart from that, you're just going to lay your epoxy plate back on. Make sure your motor wires are nice and snug in there. Okay. And then go. Be fizzy. And put all your little plate screws back in. Okay, once you got your epoxy plate back on there, nice and firm, you're going to twist it back over. Make sure you did one half twist to kind of get it upside down. Make sure you go the opposite way. If you do the same way, then you'll get your motor wires twisted. So they want to sit, your motor wires want to sit down in that channel, nice and flat. So after you do twist, just make sure that they are sitting in there nice and flat. At that point, you're going to want to put your little plate back in. Let's just slide that little dude in. Okay. Once you got that guy. Okay, now you're just going to go ahead and put your... Um, your deck screws back in, okay? Once again, holding this guy in place, you're just going to go in and line up all your holes. Just get the first one. Don't tighten up that first one. Just kind of get it, get it started, um, and that'll be kind of a place marker. Then, then what I do is I go all the way to the far corner, and as you go, you can actually look in and just kind of line it up before you put it in. Just make sure that you're pretty close. Now once you have the two, you can go ahead. Now don't you don't need to go crazy with your torque setting. Um, just kind of a, a mid mid range torque there. Okay, just something nice and firm. And once you have those two in, then you just fire away with the rest of them. Okay, <clears throat> once you got that, don't forget to tighten up your back truck because we loosen that up. Remember to get the plate out. So with that guy, I am a fan of turning the nut. That's a good rule. Use your T-tool and a Phillips screwdriver. Get it nice and snug. Precision-wise, it's funny, a lot of people don't know, but having tight hardware is one of the keys to, um, to having a nice, precise truck. So you can have the best, you know, high-precision truck, that, you know, that money can buy. But if you have loose truck hardware, it doesn't actually, it doesn't do much because a lot of the precision is lost between the, uh, the base plate and the deck itself. So get those guys nice and tight. Okay, and just to do a final check, you're going to turn your power on. Make sure that guy's good to go. Remote, turn your remote on. Watch your battery lights there and make sure this guy runs, okay? That's pretty much it. All right guys, thanks for watching. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments below. And make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay updated with all the new tech talks with R&D Lee.